All I can say is, is what a week again, huh? I mean, uh, a week I have in my notes of arguments, accusations, and when I did my notes, no answers, maybe an answer. We're still not really sure what the answer is. I mean, it's one of those weeks where it just seems like, man, I don't feel like me, the elections, I can get consumed in them. I remember Bush Moore, like, staying up all night long, waiting for it, and all the hanging chads, and, and watching Fox News until all hours of the day. I mean, just getting consumed in it. And so I really had to be cautious of myself. And, you know, it seems like there's always something that we can get drawn into. On a personal level, you know, my truck this week, if, if you've talked to me, you've probably heard my story. Just let me, let me relent or let me, let me say, woe is me for a while. I changed the battery of all things. Why would I do such a thing? And my truck hasn't been running ever since. It took me to a mechanic because mechanics should know how to change a battery. And the mechanic says, I can't fix this. And I'm sorry, poor Charlie. I went there every day to see what was going on. To see what's happening with my truck. And, and apparently the security system got activated when I changed my battery and it can't be fixed. Unless I take it to a dealership. You know, there's always something. <laughs> and there's always something to fixate on. There's always something to think about. There's always something to be focused on. In 2014, I preached a series on words. Church words. You know, the words that we say in church that, that they sound good or we actually feel spiritual when we say them, but we have no clue what we're saying. When we talk mercy, we talk righteousness, we talk sanctification, we talk salvation, all these things. We're not even really sure what they mean, but it, it just sounds good coming from our tongue. Righteous, and I don't know what righteous means, but I'm going to say it. Sanctification, holiness, I don't know, but I'm supposed to say it right here. That's where it fits. And so I spent some time looking at those words, some words that, that we said. And there was a word that I didn't preach on then, but I want to preach on this morning. It's a word that I think is very appropriate in the moments that we're living. It's a word that, that I think the world and the church use very differently. You know how when you speak the word in, in this room, it has one meaning, but when you speak the word outside this room, it has a completely other meaning. And so I feel like it's important for us today to just stop and look at this word. There's a scripture in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Remember, that's a chapter about love. And, and that chapter ends with, and now these three remain faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. You know, we get faith and we get love. But right in the middle of those words is this word hope. It's a word that when I, when I look at it on Google, when I look at Google, I just typed in Google, and I typed hope, and I got pictures like this. Like just this, eh, something out there, something maybe, something in the periphery, you know, that I can almost attain to. My hope is just like stretching out. When I looked up the, di the dictionary for the definition, it says, to want something to happen or to be true. And usually have a good reason to think that it might. And the word hope is like this, maybe want, might, there's a chance. For the youngest in the room, you know, the dumb and dumber, so you're saying there's a chance. That little bit that we can cling to, that possibility, it just seems like for, for hope in the world to understand, there just has to be something there. There's a light somewhere. It's almost like there's certainty and uncertainty and, 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 and it's somewhere in between there. But hope is, is that, that, that there's something. We want something to happen and we usually have a good reason to think that it might be true. But there's something different when it comes to hope in the Bible. You know, I found it very intriguing when Walt started where he started today. The text from Trevor. Remember, he said our hopes aren't in the stars and stripes of the flag, but in the stars and stripes of, of, of Jesus Christ. And I know what I'm preaching on. You see, there's something different about hope 
when a child of God speaks about hope. There's something different about our understanding of hope when it comes to hope expressed within the church. Yet the problem is, I think a lot of times when we express hope within the body of Christ, we're expressing a worldly hope, not a biblical hope. So a Bible dictionary definition of, of hope is a confident expectation or assurance with a sure basis. I'm going to say that again because I want you to hear the difference. A confident expectation or assurance with a sure basis. Do you hear the difference between that and wanting something to happen or true that we have a good reason to think that it might? Do you see the difference between those two? There's, there's an assurance, there's a confidence that we can have as children of God. That's what our hope is. Our hope is that something might happen, but our hope is that something will happen. We have a confident expectation. It's not a, hey, this might happen, you know, um, fans, the rest of might win, you know what I'm saying? There's not much confidence in expectation right now. It doesn't matter what the score is and what the score is, there's just not much confidence right now. There's hope. Oh, I hope they're going to pull this out. They might be up three touchdowns with five minutes left. I'm hoping they're going to win still. <laughs> the difference between that and a, and a confident expectation with a sure basis. I'm standing on something. You know, I talked about faith and hope in that, in that verse. I talked about the reality of faith and hope. I think at times we get faith, but we struggle to define hope. And then if I say to define faith and hope at the same time, we start talking over ourselves. But there's something different between faith and hope. Faith is a confidence, assurance in what has been done. That's what faith is. My faith is built upon what Jesus Christ did for me. My faith is built upon what was accomplished through the cross. While hope is a confident assurance of what is to come. My faith is about what has been done. My hope is about what is to come. And because of my faith... Because of my, my, my belief or my understanding of who God is, I have hope. Faith is truly the foundation for my hope. These three remain, faith, hope, and love. I must have faith if I'm going to have hope. Without faith, I have no hope. Without, without that understanding of what God has, has done. Holding on to God's promise for what has been done. I can't hold on to God's promise for what is to come. This morning, I just want to spend some time looking at the word hope in the scripture. My desire is this isn't going to be a normal Pastor Steve sermon. I really just want to go through some verses together so we can see what the scripture says when it comes to this idea of hope. Because I believe for each of us, it's imperative, and I'm going to get to a commission or a calling that even comes through hope at the end. But we need to understand hope according to the Word of God. I'm going to pray, Father, I thank you this morning for who you are. And I thank you for the moment you've prepared us for. God, I know in all that's been done, all that we've accomplished in this church already today, this is a word for us. I pray for our minds and our hearts. I pray for our thoughts and understanding, Lord, that they would be inclined to you. We submit ourselves to you, God, asking for your very will to be accomplished. We pray, God, that you would speak to us and illuminate truth. Your will be done, God, in the name of Jesus Christ. So the first scripture I want to talk about, Colossians chapter 1. It's verse 25. It says, I've become a servant by the commission God gave me to present you the word of God in its fullness, the mystery that has been kept hidden for ages and generations, but is now disclosed to the Lord's people. 
To them God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope and glory. I said hope cannot be found apart from faith. Our faith in Jesus Christ is the foundation for the hope that you and I live in. We must know Christ. To them, it says in verse 27, God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you. It's the hope of His glory. Hope must be found in Christ. Without Christ, there is not hope. I saw a post on Facebook. It must be true. So whenever hope is displaced, fear of man. When Jesus rose from the dead 2,000 years ago, the first disciples were filled with, filled with fear, dread, and worry. They didn't know what direction their lives would travel. Every generation of believers since the first century has been afraid of something. Yet despite this reoccurring fear, the church has been able to live and grow in the knowledge of the Lord when the followers of Jesus were willing to realign their lives with real hope. When hope is placed in Christ, we have hope. When our hope is placed anywhere else, we don't have true hope. Do you hear that? Hope must come through our faith in Jesus Christ. Without that, it's not true hope. It's this want to, might to, maybe. When my hope is found in Jesus Christ, there's a confident assurance of what He will do. So without faith, hope is absolutely impossible. First Peter chapter 3, or chapter 1, verse 3 says, Praise be to God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he's given us new birth into a what kind of hope? I want to say your hope is alive. He's given us birth into a living hope. My hope is found in Christ, but my hope is not dead. It is alive. Some of us, we need to have a living hope. That's a hope that continues on. My hope isn't in what was. My hope is in what's to come. And my hope is alive. Praise be to God. And Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, in His great mercy, He's given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith are sure by God's power until the coming of salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer in grief and all kinds of trials. Your hope is alive. My hope is found in Jesus Christ. My hope is alive. You know what I love about my hope? It's not just alive, but, but the scripture tells me that my hope, it's eternal. And if our hope in Christ is only for this life, I want someone to hear this. If my hope in Christ is only defined by this 80, 100, 130, 160, however long you want to hold on to years that I live on this earth. If our hope is only for this life, we're more to be pitied than anyone in this world. Do you hear that? That's one of Paul moments that he really steps on toes that people just miss. If my hope is really based on what's happening here and now, if it's only for this life, he says, you're, you're to be pitied. I feel sorry for you is what he's saying. More than anybody else in this world. Because see, you knew that your, your, your faith was the foundation for your hope. You said that your hope was living, but your hope is truly eternal. My hope is not defined by what is. My hope is defined by what's been done. It's defined by the promises of God. That he says, in that verse that we just read in, in Colossians, that he stored up an inheritance for us. You see, we look at hope through the lens of what is now. And the problem with that is when what is now, guess what? What is now is fallen. And when our hope is put in the fall, and then it fails. When our hope is based on just this life, man, I can't 
messed up. You see, my hope is eternal. My hope is more than just now. My hope is that Jesus Christ is coming back for His church. My hope is that He has prepared a place for me. My hope is that I get to spend an eternity with Him. My hope is not defined by what's happening today or tomorrow. It's not defined by whether my truck starts tonight or next week. My hope is eternal. My hope is not defined by who wins an election and who doesn't. You get it? And if that's where my hope is at, Hope is, is found in Christ. Hope is, is alive. It's eternal. And I love the pictures the scripture give us for hope. We ended Sunday school with a verse in Hebrews chapter 6. It gives us a picture of what biblical hope looks like. You know, like I said, in the world I feel like hope is this reaching out, clinging to something, or hoping to grasp a hold of something. The picture scripture gives us for what biblical hope is. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 18. God did this so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie. What are you hearing there? That is concrete. That is solid. There isn't much give or take in there. Two unchangeable things that, 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 that it's impossible for God. We who have fled take hold of the hope set before us may be greatly encouraged. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul. Firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain where our forerunner, Jesus, has entered on our behalf. He has become a high priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. This is the picture the scripture gives us for hope. What, what's the point of an anchor? The might to hold us in the spot we're in? To maybe keep us here? What's the point of an anchor? It keeps us there, right? It's something solid. I love this picture of hope. My hope is clinging to my faith that's in Jesus Christ. That it doesn't matter what the storm is, my hope is anchored behind that curtain. The picture the scripture gives us for, for hope isn't this uh, peripheral, maybe I might get a hold of this, I might reach it one day. God says your hope is absolutely certain. It's an anchor for your soul. Not only does the scripture describe it as an anchor, but also as a helmet. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, putting on faith and love as a breastplate, in the hope of salvation as a helmet. And we're going back to 1 Corinthians 13. Faith, hope, and love. And he says that faith and hope, or faith, faith and love are a, bre a breastplate. What does a breastplate are? Guarded by my faith and love. What is hope guarding? What is hope guarding? Okay. What is biblical hope? The assurance that God is going to do what He said He would do. That He is not going to lie, that He cannot change. The sure basis that we have. What does the enemy want to do in the midst of turmoil? Does he not want to make you think a lot of things that don't align with the Word of God? Does he not want to put thoughts in you that say, oh my gosh, uh oh, that wasn't what I was expecting? That battle is right here. That battle is up here. God has said the hope of salvation is the helmet for your mind. My hope that's been founded in Jesus Christ is what I must put on when the enemy starts talking, when things are confusing, or I don't understand the moment that I'm in. I've got a hope. I've got 
have to remind myself sometimes. It, it doesn't matter. I got a living hope that's eternal. It doesn't really matter. God's promised that, that He's prepared a place for me is not that big of a deal. He's promised that I'm a joint heir with Jesus Christ. I need to put that on right now that He's bigger than my life. He's bigger than these days. My hope is not defined by my life, but is eternal. And sometimes I need that helmet to protect me in the midst of the moment. Why? I need hope. You and I should expect hope. If we've confessed Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we should have hope that comes through Jesus Christ. That is not defined by this world. It's defined by what He's done. It is sure. It is concrete. It is living. It is eternal. And it should begin to produce in you. You see, when I have this kind of hope, when I'm living with biblical hope, when I've got that helmet on or that anchor in, my life is different because the fruit of that hope begins to be produced in my life. You want to know what the fruit of hope looks like? Romans chapter 5. Therefore, since we've been justified through faith, we have peace. The fruit of hope is peace. The product of biblical hope in your life, the product that you should expect to see in your life is peace. But we have been justified through faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we gained access by faith in this grace which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings, because we know that sufferings produce perseverance, and perseverance character, and character hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been pouring into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Look at this, the way we see suffering through the eyes of hope. Does it not change when we have hope because I can recognize that what's happening in me, this suffering that I'm going through, this trial that I'm in the midst of, it's producing something, it's producing perseverance, it's producing perseverance that will become character, and character will reveal itself through hope. Man, I start looking at the problems, I think all the products. Come on, let's go there. Oh, why did God like it? What's going to be the product? All oh, socialism's coming. We're not going to be able to have a church. We're not going to be able to meet anymore. We're not. We said the economy's going to fall. Are you going to do this? Are you going to do that? We've got all these stories that we write, but I need to look at it through the lens of hope and allow God to write the story. I've got to recognize that in this moment, it produces in me perseverance. Why? Because I know that it's a moment that God wants to do something with His church. I know this is a moment that God wants to move forward. I was on a call with pastors on Monday, and they were worried about the election. And, and, and a pastor, some of you guys may know, his name is Jerry Spann. He was a missionary to Africa for like 35 years, and he pastored in Shatter, Nebraska for a while at the church over there. Anyway, we were talking about the election. You know, he said, you know, I was a pastor in Shatter, Nebraska. He said, I remember when I was a pastor in Shatter, Nebraska. And he said that, uh, there was a Roman Catholic guy that got elected president. And he said, boy, everyone was scared that this Roman Catholic guy was going to be controlled by the Pope, and the Pope was going to tell him everything he could do for the United States, and all of a sudden the United States was going to be an arm of the Catholic Church. It's basically what he was communicating to the pastors on this. He said, I've been there and I watched, but God is still on the throne. You see, sometimes we need that assurance that God is in control. My faith is in God. And so in the midst of my suffering, it doesn't matter because God is using this moment to produce in me what? Perseverance. I will endure through this. Why? So that my character can be shown that what I say I believe is what I truly believe, right?
that what I say is what I believe. The problem is this suffering oftentimes reveals character that is not of God. You know what I'm saying? My character, it wavers because my foundation wasn't on his word. My hope was somewhere else. And then my character is redeemable. I'm sorry. Hope produces peace. Not only does hope produce peace, but hope produces joy. Romans chapter 12, verse 12 says, Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. There is joy that comes through hope. When biblical hope is expressed in your life, there should be a joy in you that is unchangeable. Not only is there joy, but there's boldness that comes through hope. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 12 says, Therefore, since we have such a hope, we are very bold. So the product of, of, of hope in my life, it should be peace, it should be joy, it should be boldness. If we go back to Hebrews chapter 6, God did this so that, that, that what we do, he has this anger for the soul that is firm and secure. The product of hope should be security or stability in your life. What did James say? We're not like those who are tossed from, from, from with every child here and there. But we have a confidence in us that is, that is rooted, that anchor for our soul. The product of hope in your life should be stability and security no matter what comes. You see, there's something secure and firm for us to stand on right now. That anchor, it says, goes behind the inner curtain, in the inner sanctuary. That's the presence of God. If you remember a few weeks ago, the pastor preached a series on words and songs, and we talked about the holy moments, the place where God's presence is. That's what he's talking about right now. When the anchor for my soul, the hope that I have, is rooted in the very presence of God. I have security. I have stability. It doesn't matter the storm. It doesn't matter how, 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 how powerful things are or how, how crazy things are around me because my anchor is in God. And because it's in Him, it will not be removed. He's immovable. He's unchangeable. It's not going to move me either. What happens is too often we've placed our hope in movable things. We've placed our hope in the things of this world. And we wonder why we're being tossed here and there. You see the reality this is the kingdom moment where our lights should shine. The hope that you have, it's 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 14. I'm going to conclude with this. But even if you should suffer for what is right, you're blessed. Do not fear their threats, don't be frightened, but in your hearts, for your Christ is Lord. Always be prepared to give everyone an answer who asks you for the reason for the the hope that you have. Who's asking you for that reason? It says, don't be afraid, don't fear threats, and don't be frightened. But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone. See, there's people who are looking at you right now. There's people who are watching you right now. And I believe your hope should be a demonstration. Your hope should be peculiar enough that they ask, what, what, what's going on? How are you so, I'm going to say confident, not cocky right now? You see, our hope should shine bright right now. God wants to use your hope as an evangel evangelical tool in the midst of this moment. Yeah, I don't know why everything is. And it may not be defined by an election, but it may be defined by another 
season in your life, there may be something that comes that when people look at you, they say, how are you standing so tall? How come you're not going here and there and everywhere? You don't even look wet in the middle of the storm. What is it about you right now? Because from the word of God, and God does not lie, it says it everywhere. I think that's believers and unbelievers. Last time I checked, everyone, that people will notice in you a hope that is different. And God will use that hope to draw others to Him. Because then when someone asks you about your hope, what do you got to tell them? I got to tell them my hope is found. I got to tell them my hope is found in Jesus Christ. And I got to explain to him that because my hope is found in Jesus Christ, my hope is alive and is not dead because he was raised from the dead. And I got to explain further about my hope that Jesus Christ was, was, was not dead. He did not remain in the grave so that I could have an eternal hope that is in him. He's gone to prepare a place for me is what he promised. You see, then I begin to talk about my faith. It's a faith that is rooted in the very presence of God. And it's not changing. It's an anchor for me. It's a helmet for my mind. So that when the enemy tries to lie, it doesn't work. Because see, I'm living with the fruit. That's the fruit that you're seeing. That's the peace. That's the joy. That's the boldness. That's the security. That's, that's the strength that I have right now. That's the product of biblical hope. That's the moment the world needs. That's the promise that we need to be living in. You can come forward. I was talking to Walt back too, just in case anyone was wondering. <laughs> it might have been for you too. Yeah, I, I, I love to point out God's orchestration. Walt, here we talk about what I was going to bring home. Do. Well, let's start to worship today with a text from the sun. And we'll pray before worship today that we would have a hope that's in Jesus Christ. I don't know if you guys all recognize that. This might be too candid of a pastor moment for a second, but I didn't read the Sunday school lesson this week before Sunday school. I read it already, just not this week. Do you want to know what the last, well, it was the second to last paragraph, because there was one line after that. The last paragraph in our Sunday school lesson, you know what verse they quoted today? It's Hebrews chapter 6, verse 17. I believe that God desires for us to hear about hope. God desires for us to live in hope. I'm going to share this. Sorry, Ryan, you're in trouble. His eyes got me. New Bible study Thursday morning. And Brent and I were talking about the election. And then Ron came in and he said, You know, I was worked up about the election. He said, But I, I don't know what happened. He said, And all of a sudden, he said, I just got peace. You see, the part of the hope is peace. He said, He's all excited. He wanted to talk to Michelle, but she didn't even get it. But the product of hope is peace. The product of hope is joy. The product of hope is boldness. The product of hope is security. And I don't know where you are, and I don't know who God is longing to speak to this morning. But what I do know is someone here this day needs to hear about biblical hope. They need to have a hope that's defined in the, in the Word of God, not by the words of men. They need to have a hope that's defined by what God has said and what Jesus Christ did, rather than this, this aspiration for something that might, or this, this want, or, or, or maybe. I want to tell you how great God is. He brought it three times. Three times. Then it's beginning of worship. Sermon. Because he wants you to hear it. Not only hear it, but know it. <coughs> but live in it. 
You know, someone today may need to throw out that anger. <laughs> it been a crazy week. I've been consumed with Fox, CNN. Man, but you're not throwing that anger just anywhere. You're throwing it into the very presence of God. You're throwing it into the very place where He is. You say, you know what? I may have been looking everywhere else, but my anger, it has to be in Him. This is the Word made flesh. Get your face in this Word. Let this be the anger for you. Don't let the news be determined by CNN or Fox, but let the good news be the place that you're seeking. It's not going to tell you the results of the election. I'm sorry. It'll tell you about your eternal hope. It's not going to tell you about tomorrow, maybe, but it's going to tell you about the promises of God that are forever. Someone else today may say, I think I get it, Pastor, with the thoughts. And it is calm. I just think about, oh my, what if? I mean, today just need to pick up that helmet of salvation. Just put it on your head. Let everything that comes to you come through the filter of the cross. Huh? Let everything that, that you dwell on, let everything that you think about for a minute come through the cross of Jesus Christ. Man, we're going to talk about taking captive thoughts and arguments that set themselves up against the knowledge of God. You put on a helmet of salvation. You start looking at things through that lens. Suddenly, I think about the place he's prepared. I think about the promise that my sins are forgiven and I get to be with him forever. I think about the glory of, of having the streets of gold, the, the stories that I've heard from, from, from people. I think about what I've read in the book and, and suddenly I, I'm not so worried now. Suddenly I've got peace and joy that's welling up inside of me. Suddenly there's a boldness in me because I know what God has said he would do. I know what he promised me when I confessed him as my Lord and Savior. So now I look forward to where I'm going. I look forward to the king that's coming back. I want to live in such a way that people ask me about my hope. I want someone to say, what's the reason for the hope that you have? I want people in church and outside church to say, how? Father, I thank you this morning for this word. God, I thank you for the word that you desire for us to hear. God, I thank you that we have hope that is secure. God, I thank you that our hope isn't defined by maybes or mites, but our hope is defined by assurance and promises. And I pray for each of us in this room, God. I pray for an anchor. God, I pray that we can throw our anchor into the very presence of God. Into the very promises of God. Into the very place His presence dwells. God, I pray we pick up that helmet. The helmet of salvation we place it upon our hands. So that our hope can be a revelation of your goodness to this world. So that our hope, God, can be a revelation of who you are to those who we come and come. This morning, you have Walt lead us in course. And sometimes anchors are heavy, you need help throwing them. I want to help you throw your anchor today if you need help. 
If you say, Pastor, I've just been overwhelmed. I've been worked out. I need someone. I just want a moment to, to talk and, and, and to pray together so that we can get that anchor where it needs to be. If you say, Pastor, you talk about a hell of salvation, but I don't even know what salvation is, but I recognize it's something I need. I want an opportunity to pray with you. I want an opportunity to tell you about the love of Christ and, and, and the reality that your sins are forgiven through his sacrifice. So you can put that helmet on. We have hope, amen. If you have other needs this morning, we're going to open the altars up as Walt leads, of course. Uh, it's an opportunity for us to pray together. It's an opportunity for us to focus on God's work and plans. I'm going to conclude with this because, you know, I mean, God can say one time, two times, three times, maybe four times. Brent just said, just ask God, and he, he wrote this for me. So it says, I'm a captain of the ship that's named my soul. Its hull is heavily loaded with cranks full of God's love, but I know my ship can weather any storm because it's securely anchored in a bed of hope, which is safely tethered by a chain forged in my faith in Jesus Christ. Yeah. We have hope, amen? Yeah. God desires you to live in his hope, amen? Yeah. The Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. May he turn his face towards you and grant you his peace. And may you live with hope as the anchor for your soul in the heavens and for your mind. Amen? Amen. Be blessed.